My name is Joseph Jacob. You are watching Secrets of Public Speaking. Today, we will pay attention how to expand our vocabulary. What bricks are to the bricklayer and what drugs are to the medical doctor is what words are to the public speaker. When a public speaker has a lot of words at his disposal, he will most likely be able to convey his thoughts and feelings in a way that the audience will understand perfectly. On the other hand, when a public speaker has fewer words at his disposal, he will be struggling to express his thoughts and feelings and at the end of the day he might end up not really conveying the thoughts and feelings he wanted to convey to the audience. The World Book Encyclopedia states that vocabulary building is a lifelong project. What that means is that as long as we live, no matter how old we are, we will continue to learn new words. Imagine if you learn one word every day. It means that at the end of a year, you must have learned 365 words, and that is very massive. Now the question is, how do you expand your vocabulary? Since vocabulary expansion means learning new words, you must take steps that will help you to encounter words. For example, if you want to catch a fish, you will not go riding a bicycle, you will go fishing. Similarly, if you want to expand your vocabulary, you will take direct actions. What are those actions? The first one you need to take is to read extensively. Read books, magazines, journals, newspapers, and every readable material. When you are reading, you will come across new words you've never heard before, you've never seen before. What you need to do is to always have your jotter handy. Once you come across such new words, you write them down in your jotter. The second thing you can do to encounter words is to listen attentively when other people are speaking. When you listen to people, you see them use words you've never heard before. When you listen to radio programs, television programs, even movies, you will see actors use words and expressions you've never heard before. When you encounter such words, what you need to do is to write them down in your jotter. You need to write them down because if you commit them to your memory, if you are not very careful, you might forget them and by so doing, you lose the opportunity of learning that particular word. Now that you have written these new words in your jotter, the next thing you need to do is to learn about the word itself and I will recommend a dictionary. But many people learn new words without using a dictionary. The way they do it is by understanding the meaning of the new word by the context the word appears. For example, let's assume that someone knows the meaning of the word stingy. But in reading this material, he comes across a new word. You will see how the person can understand what the new word means without using a dictionary. The sentence is, Uche is not like his brother Obi. He is stingy while Obi is liberal. The new word we encountered in this sentence is liberal. Now the question is, how will the reader of this sentence know the meaning of liberal? Remember the sentence is contrasting Uche and Obi. And we have learned from the sentence that Uche is stingy which means liberal should be the opposite of being stingy, which is being generous. With this method, someone who has not come across that word liberal before can deduce the meaning of liberal. The other way people know the meaning of words is by breaking the word down, especially if it has affixes attached to it. For example, the word irrational has the prefix IR and when you split it, you have IR and rational and we know what rational means. 
somebody who acts logically, who thinks logically. So irrational should be the opposite of rational. By so doing, the person have known the meaning of the word irrational. Nevertheless, I still insist that if you want to build your vocabulary, you must make use of a dictionary. The question is, why do I insist on a dictionary? Imagine you are traveling to a location that is 10 kilometers away. One person chooses to drive to that place, another person chooses to go by car. Who do you think will be faster? Definitely the person who go by car. If you learn new words by mere deducing the meaning of the words, you will be slow in your quest to expand your vocabulary. But if you use dictionary, it will be faster and you will learn more words by just searching for only a single word. Now, what are the things that a dictionary should be able to do for you? First, a dictionary will tell you the correct spelling of the word. Like the word we use in the first example, liberal. If you look at the way it's pronounced, you may think that there is no E after the B. But if you go to a dictionary, you will now see the correct spelling that there is a E after the B and before the R. So the dictionary will help you to know how to spell the word correctly. The second thing a dictionary will do for you is that it will show you the transcription of the word. What I mean by transcription is that it will show you how to pronounce the word. The third thing a dictionary will do for you is that it will tell you the part of speech or the parts of speech the word belong to. Is the word a noun, an adjective, an adverb, a pronoun? The dictionary will tell you the part of speech the word belongs to. Bear in mind that sometimes a word may belong to two parts of speech depending on the way the word is used. Another thing a dictionary will do for you is that it will give you the definition of the word. In fact, this is the most common reason why people take up their dictionary to search for words, just to know the meaning. Yeah, knowing the meaning of a word is part of the things a good dictionary will do for you. Besides that too, a word can have several meanings. Or several ways it can be used because it means different things. So a dictionary will not just give you one definition of the word, it will give you other definitions of the word which will surely help you to improve your vocabulary. A dictionary will also help you to give you idiomatic expressions that contains that word. It can also give you phrases or other expressions that has to do with that word. Another benefit of using a dictionary is that a dictionary will tell you other forms of the word. You don't just know the form of a word because you know the form or other forms of another word. For example, look at the word beauty. You say beautiful. Now, compare it with the word danger. Do you say dangerful? Definitely no. So you need a dictionary to tell you other forms that this word can be used. Another benefit of using a dictionary is that it will give you examples with sentences to show you how the word can be fitted into a sentence. You know that knowing a word is one thing. Knowing how to use it appropriately in a sentence is another thing. So a dictionary will give you examples with sentences how these words can be used. Now, there are other two things a dictionary can do. A dictionary can give you the synonym of the word you are looking for. When I say synonym, I mean words that are similar in meaning with the word you are looking for. It can also give you antonyms or opposite in meaning of the words. Now, we have a book called Tesseros, like dictionary. It basically focuses on synonyms and antonyms of words. If you can lay your hands on such a book, it will also help you to improve your vocabulary very fast. All these things I've said about the dictionary 
might not be very easy for you to understand. So to help you understand it, we are going to use a dictionary right now to use example of the first word we use, Libra, to see how using a dictionary will help us understand the word faster than trying to deduce the meaning by ourselves. The dictionary we will use is the Oxford Advanced Learner's Dictionary, the 7th edition. Bear in mind that this edition is not the latest edition, but we've noticed that most people have this edition. So we we'll use this edition to check the word liberal and see the things we can find out from it. From this dictionary, you can see the word liberal and it will help you to determine the spelling L-I-B-E-R-A-L. The next, after the word itself, is the transcription, which helps you to know how to pronounce the word correctly. After the transcription, you'll see the A-D-J, which means adjective, and also noun. So it means that the word liberal is both an adjective and also a noun. Now let's look at some of the definition from the adjective side. You have respecting other opinions. The first definition there is willing to understand and respect other people's behavior, opinion, etc. Especially when they are different from your own, believing people should be able to choose how they behave. All these are another definition of liberal. So with this definition in mind, you can use the word liberal attitude, liberal views, or liberal opinions. With this just first definition, you've seen, we've seen a new thing from what we did when we are trying to know the meaning of the word from the context of the material we are reading. The next definition is in terms of politics. Wanting or allowing a lot of political and economic freedom and supporting gradual social, political, or religious change. So this is another definition of the word liberal. Look at an example that will help us to know how to use it in sentence. Some politicians want more liberal trade relations with Europe. So, with this definition in mind, we can use the word liberal democracy, liberal theories, a liberal politician. Now, the third definition of liberal, still in terms of politics, is connected with the British Liberal Party in the past, or of a liberal party in another country. So, when we use the word liberal, it can be relating to politics, a liberal party, either in in Britain or in another country. Another definition or another meaning is in terms of being generous and that is the one we got from deducing the definition of liberal from the context of the sentence. So when you say liberal with something, it means that the person is generous, giving in large amount. Now, you will see the next sign, X, Y, N, which means synonym. Lavish is another word that we can use in place of generous. Look at this example. She is very liberal with her money. Another example. I think Sam is too liberal with his criticism. What it means is that he criticizes people too much. Another definition under education of liberal is concerned with increasing somebody's general knowledge and experience rather than particular skills. A liberal education, which means an education that is focused more on theory than on practical. Now, the, the, the last definition under liberal as an adjective is not exact. Number six, that is not completely accurate or exact. The synonym is free. Example, liberal translation of the text. So with this definition in mind, you can say a liberal interpretation of the law. Now look at what we said, form of word. 
other forms of that same word liberal, you will see liberally. Liberally is now an adverb. Now, look at an example how it can be used in a sentence. Apply the cream liberally. Another example. The word original is liberally interpreted in copyright law. Now, let's check out liberal when it is used as a noun, as you can see. It means one, somebody who respects others. A person who understands and respects other people's opinions and behavior, especially when they are different from their own. In terms of politics, it can mean a person who supports political, social, and religious change. Look at an example. Reform is popular with middle class liberals. And the third meaning in terms of noun in politics is that a member of the British Liberal Party in the past or a Liberal Party in another country. With all this, you can now agree with me that dictionary is not just about the meaning of words. There are so many things we can learn from dictionary and it will help to hasten our vocabulary expansion. This is where the cookies crumble on today's edition of Secrets of Public Speaking. In our next video, we'll look at something very interesting. Remember, in my introduction, I said that what drugs are to a medical doctor is what words are to a public speaker. But think about this. Does a medical doctor give any kind of drug he likes to all types of patients or does he consider the medical condition and circumstances of each patient definitely you agree with me that the latter one is the case the same thing applies to a public speaker that you have a lot of words at your disposal doesn't mean you can use any words you like when you are delivering a speech so, how do you choose the right words when delivering your speech? That will be the focus of our next video. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.